Welcome to this webinar, Connectivity for the Central Office or Data Center, which is in three parts. In this first part, we will look at fiber cable management. Lower operations costs, greater reliability and flexibility in service offerings, quicker deployment of new and upgraded services, these are the characteristics of a successful service provider in a competitive global market. Service providers continue to build out high bandwidth networks around the world. These networks use a great deal of fiber, the medium that meets both their bandwidth and cost requirements, but just deploying the fiber is not enough. A successful fiber network also requires a well-built infrastructure based on a strong fiber cable management system. This management of the fiber cables has a direct impact on network reliability, performance, and cost. It also affects network maintenance and operations, as well as the ability to reconfigure and expand the network, restore service, and implement new services quickly. A strong fiber cable management system provides bend radius protection, cable routing paths, cable accessibility, and physical protection of the fiber. If these concepts are executed correctly, the network can deliver its full competitive advantages. There are four critical elements of fiber cable management, bend radius protection, cable routing paths, cable access, and physical protection. All four aspects directly affect the network's reliability, functionality, and operational cost. Let's consider the first, bend radius protection. Cable raceways, fiber termination panels, and distribution frames should be designed, installed, and maintained so as to properly manage the minimum allowable bend radius for fiber cables and patch cords. There are two basic types of bends in fiber, microbends and macrobends. We discussed this earlier and said that microbends are very small bends or deformities in the fiber, while macrobends are larger bends. The fiber's radius around bends impacts the fiber network's long-term reliability and performance. Simply put, fibers bent beyond the specified minimum bend diameters can break, causing service failures and increasing network operations costs. Cable manufacturers, internet and telecommunications service providers, and others specify a minimum bend radius for fibers and fiber cables. The minimum bend radius will vary depending on the specific fiber cable. However, in general, the minimum bend radius should not be less than 10 times the outer diameter or OD of the fiber cable. Thus, a 3 mm cable should not have any bends less than 30 mm in radius. Telcordia recommends a minimum 38 mm bend radius for 3 mm patch cords. This radius is for a fiber cable that is not under any load or tension, but if a tensile load is applied to the cable, as in the weight of a cable in a long vertical run, or a cable that is pulled tightly between two points, the minimum bend radius is increased due to the added stress. There are two reasons for maintaining minimum bend radius protection, enhancing the fiber's long-term reliability and reducing signal attenuation. Bends with less than the specified minimum radius will exhibit a higher probability of long-term failure as the amount of stress put on the fiber grows. As the bend radius becomes even smaller, the stress and probability of failure increase. The other effect of minimum bend radius violations is more immediate. The amount of attenuation through a bend in a fiber increases as the radius of the bend decreases. The attenuation due to bending is greater at 1550 nanometers than it is at 1310 nanometers and even greater at 1625 nanometers. An attenuation level of up to 0.5 dB can be seen in a bend with a radius of 16 millimeters. Both fiber breakage and added attenuation have dramatic effects on long-term network reliability, network operations costs, and the ability to maintain and grow a customer base. In general, bend radius problems will not be seen during the initial installation of a fiber distribution system, or FDS, where an outside plant fiber cable meets the cable that runs inside a central office or head end. During initial installation, the number of fibers routed to the optical distribution frame, ODF, is usually small. The small number of fibers, combined with their natural stiffness, ensures that the bend radius is larger than the minimum. If a tensile load is applied to the fiber, the possibility of a bend radius violation increases. 
The problems grow when more fibers are added to the system. As fibers are added on top of installed fibers, macro bends can be induced on the installed fibers if they are routed over an unprotected bend. A fiber that had been working fine for years can suddenly have an increased level of attenuation, as well as a potentially shorter service life. The fiber used for analog video CATV systems presents a special case. Here, receiver power is critical to cost-effective operation and service quality, and bend radius violations can have different but equally dramatic effects. Analog CATV systems are generally designed to optimize transmitter output power. Due to carrier-to-noise ratio CNR requirements, the receiver signal power level is controlled normally to within a 2 dB range. The goal is for the signal to have enough attenuation through the fiber network, including cable lengths, connectors, splices, and splitters, so that no attenuators are needed at the receiver. Having to attenuate the signal a large amount at the receiver means that the power is not being efficiently distributed to the nodes, and possibly more transmitters are being used than are necessary. Since the power level at the receiver is more critical, any additional attenuation caused by bending effects can be detrimental to picture quality, potentially causing customers to be dissatisfied and switch to other vendors. Since any unprotected bends are a potential point of failure, the fiber cable management system should provide bend radius protection at all points where a fiber cable makes a bend. Having proper bend radius protection throughout the fiber network helps ensure the network's long-term reliability, thus helping maintain and grow the customer base. Reduced network downtime due to fiber failures also reduces the operating cost of the network. Bending of single-mode fiber has everyone talking these days. The idea that you can bend a fiber around a pencil without a dramatic increase in attenuation is a concept that has everyone considering new fiber applications and design possibilities. Today, industry standards for traditional single-mode jumpers typically specify a minimum bend radius of 10 times the outside diameter of the jacketed cable, or 38 millimeters, 1.5 inches, whichever is greater. This new breed of flexible single-mode optical fiber has the potential to significantly reduce these minimum bend radius requirements to values as low as 15 millimeters, 0.6 inches, depending on the cable configuration without increasing attenuation. There are many names for optical fiber that can endure a tighter bend radius, such as bend insensitive, bend resistant, or bend optimized. As mentioned above, reduced bend radius fiber is able to withstand tighter bends within frames, panels, and pathways, and is designed to perform with low loss across the spectrum of wavelengths, from 1285 to 1650 nanometers, using all the channels available on those wavelengths to maximize bandwidth. Current designs include low water peak or zero water peak so that high attenuation is avoided at 1383 nanometers. Many reduced bend radius optical fiber products meet ITU-T recommendation G.657, meaning they work well at 1550 nanometers for long distance and voice applications and at 1625 nanometers for video applications. Despite the improved bend radius, the reality of this fiber is that bend radius protection is still a concern, just not to the extent of regular fiber. There is still a mechanical limit on how tightly any optical fiber can be routed before the structural integrity of the glass is violated. The assumptions about improved performance are not accurate either, at least beyond the exceptional bend radius performance. In reality, the performance of reduced bend radius optical fiber or any optical fiber depends upon many factors, not just bend radius properties. By itself, reduced bend radius optical fiber does not offer improvements in attenuation. True, it bends more tightly without causing additional attenuation. Yet laid out on a long straight run next to a standard optical fiber, there is no difference in performance that can be attributed to the cable's construction. It is inaccurate to believe that reduced bend radius optical fiber is the end-all solution, when in fact there are many other factors that determine optical fiber link performance, including durability, connector pull-off resistance, and connector performance. When it comes to an optical fiber network, success may be measured in one or many ways, such as maximum system uptime, minimum operational and material costs, or no lost revenue due to outages. 
Achieving these goals requires a complete cable management system that includes cable routing paths, cable and connector access, physical protection, and of course, bend radius protection. The second aspect of fiber cable management is cable routing paths. Racks and cabinets, fiber termination panels, and distribution frames should be designed, installed, and maintained so as to provide easy and intuitive cable routing and proper slack storage. This aspect is related to bend radius as improper routing of fibers by technicians is one of the major causes of bend radius violations. Routing paths should be clearly defined and easy to follow. In fact, these paths should be designed so that the technician has no other option than to route the cables properly. Leaving cable routing to the technician's imagination leads to an inconsistently routed, difficult to manage fiber network. Improper cable routing also causes increased congestion in the termination panel and the cableways, increasing the possibility of bend radius violations and long-term failure. Well-defined routing paths, on the other hand, reduce the training time required for technicians and improve the uniformity of the work done. The routing paths also ensure that bend radius requirements are maintained at all points, improving network reliability, and makes accessing individual fibers easier, quicker, and safer, reducing the time required for reconfigurations. Well-defined cable routing paths not only reduce the twisting of fibers, but also greatly reduces the time required to route and reroute patch cords. This has a direct effect on network operating costs and the time required to turn up or restore service. The third element of fiber cable management is the accessibility of the installed fibers. Fiber termination panels and distribution frames should be designed, installed, and maintained so as to provide easy connector and mating adapter access. Allowing easy access to installed fibers is critical in maintaining proper bend radius protection. The accessibility should ensure that any fiber can be installed or removed without inducing a macro bend on an adjacent fiber. The accessibility of the fibers in the fiber cable management system can mean the difference between a network reconfiguration time of 20 minutes per fiber or one of over 90 minutes per fiber. Accessibility is most critical during network reconfiguration operations and directly impacts operation costs and network reliability. The fourth element of fiber cable management is the physical protection of the installed fibers and equipment. All fibers should be protected throughout the network from accidental damage by technicians. Cable raceways, racks and cabinets, fiber termination panels, and distribution frames should be designed, installed, and maintained so as to provide physical protection for fiber cables, connectors, and patch cords. Fibers routed between pieces of equipment without proper protection are susceptible to damage, which can critically affect network reliability. So the fiber cable management system should therefore ensure that every fiber is protected from physical damage. All four elements of fiber cable management come together in the fiber distribution system, which provides an interface between outside plant OSP fiber cables and fiber optic terminal FOT equipment. A fiber distribution system handles four basic functions, termination, splicing, slack storage, and housing of passive optical components. A fiber distribution system can be non-centralized or centralized. Let's look at a non-centralized fiber distribution system first. This is one in where the OSP fiber cables come into the CO and are routed to a rack or cabinet, sometimes referred to as an ODF, optical distribution frame. This will be located near the active equipment or FOT fiber optic terminal equipment they are serving. Each new OSP fiber cable run into the office is routed directly to the ODF located nearest the equipment with which it was originally intended to work. This is how many fiber networks originally started out when fiber counts were small and future growth was not anticipated. As network requirements change, however, the facilities that use the OSP fibers also change. Changing a particular facility to a different OSP fiber can be very difficult, since the distance may be great and there tends to be overlapping cable routing. 
While a non-centralized fiber distribution system may initially appear to be a cost-effective and an efficient means to deploy fiber within an office, experience has shown that major problems with flexibility and cable management will arise as the network evolves and changes. These reasons suggest the need for a centralized fiber distribution system. A centralized fiber distribution system provides a network that is more flexible, more cost-efficient to operate, and has better long-term reliability. The type of fiber distribution system brings all OSP fibers to a common location at which all fiber cables to be routed within the office originate. At the ODF, all OSP fibers can be terminated at a common location, making distribution of the fibers within the OSP cable to any point in the office easier and more efficient. This centralized system reduces the time and expense required to reconfigure the network in the event of equipment changes, cable cuts, or network expansion. That completes Part 1. Please continue on to Part 2. Thank you.